Welcome to the best lesson of the winter, which is snowshoeing. And you can start off by talking about some history of snowshoeing, then you'll move on to talking about foot load, and then the best part of the lesson is when you get to go outside with the snowshoes. Which will So as you can see from our outline here, the students are doing more than just walking outside in the snowshoes. They're learning about the history of snowshoes and how the foot load or amount of weight per square centimeter on a snowshoe relates to the adaptations of animals and how well a snowshoe will function in different kinds of snow in different kinds of environments. So by the end of this lesson, the student should be able to describe the pros and cons of different kinds of snowshoes, demonstrate the proper use of a snowshoe, calculate the uh, foot load for several different animals and compare that with the foot load of a human with and without a snowshoe, as well as describe and identify all the different parts of a snowshoe. When you start talking about the history of snowshoeing, you can pass around these pictures of snowshoes that have been used traditionally and modern snowshoes, as well as a diagram that shows parts of a traditional snowshoe. So when you get to talk about foot load, uh, you're going to go through this worksheet with your students and it has two sides. One side has all of the numbers and information that they'll need and the other side is the laminated worksheet. So here we are on the windswept hill of Sunset Lake where you'll be finding your snowshoes. You can come right over here to Oak Cabin where you'll find all the snowshoes. You can see the snowshoes are organized by size and variety. You'll want to make sure to put your snowshoes back in the same way that you found them so the next person doesn't have to hunt through Miss Matt's snowshoes to outfit their entire class. What we'll do is we'll go through how to put on each style of snowshoe. This one has a ratchet strap and so how you're going to put the ratchet strap on is you can loosen it by pinching together the white with the rest and then it just carefully slides out. You don't have to slide it all the way off. In fact, it's easier if you don't. You just want to slide it to the end, pull out the heel strap, and then you can have the kid put their foot in the shoe and then you ratchet it close just by going like this. Until it's nice and snug, but not cutting off their circulation, of course. Ratchet, ratchet, ratchet. And then the heel, you just pull that till it's snug. And then you want it to be pretty tight. Tuck it onto the hook there. And then it goes around the other side. And then, you should be all ready to snowshoe. You should be able to lift your foot up and the snowshoe shouldn't come off the foot and it shouldn't be able to slide forward and backward. But you will be able to lift your heel up and down because of how the snowshoe is built. So your second kind of snowshoe strap is looks kind of like a, a hiking belt, sort of. And you just have to pull on the end of the strap and maybe hold the buckle to get it to tighten and then pull back to get it to loosen. Have the kids stick their foot in there. They may be able to pull the straps themselves, but if they need help, you can just get in there and give them a tug. Again, so they're snug. They're a little hard to get started, but once you get them going, they're fine. And then, again, on the heel strap, this one, you just give it a good tug, and once it's snug, they should be able to lift their heel up but it shouldn't slide so back. our last variety is the Northern Lights variety. And you can see that the straps are, look a little bit like a funky belt buckle. And then the back strap is similar to the last one that we covered. So for this one, you wanna put it on the ground. You're gonna to have to lift these up, put the foot in. Now there's three straps on this one instead of just two. This is probably the trickiest buckle that we have. So what you want to do is you want to pull it nice and tight, and these are a little rubbery, a little stretchy, and then pull it over the hook. And then the trick is to push it down on top of the little metal hook to get it to stay. Okay, and then I'm going to do my heel strap just like I did on the last one. Simply pull tab. Alright, and then your 
set with the northern lights? Well, when you're snowshoeing through the beautiful terrain of Suez, you want to make sure that you instruct your students on some techniques before you let them get started on their hike. So one technique with walking is the kids will find that they'll have to keep their feet a little bit wider apart than normal. If they keep them too close together, the snowshoes are just going to cross over each other and they might trip. So a wide stance, and at some point they might get to a tree. If you're in the woods, they might have to cross over. Now the proper technique for crossing over a tree is get parallel to the tree and just step over like this and will also help prevent falling. Now, when you're going up or down a hill, if it's steep, you want to make sure that your students are walking, again, sideways down the hill, which will help prevent falling. If one of your students happens to fall, there's two ways that they can get up. If you or another adult or another student is close by, you can just have them sit up, put their feet in front of them, and reach out a hand for help. Ta-da! Or, you might have them get up on their own. They can just sit up, put one foot down, get on a knee, and then stand up. Upright snowshoers. So just remember, snowshoeing is fun and it's beautiful, but snowshoe with safety.